All right, so casual Fridays again. Um, this is connected to the structural aspect of writing, um, how we sequence or organize things. Um, but I want to talk about kind of internal paragraph structuring techniques, like how you can make a paragraph from sentence or a series or sequence of sentences more uh, more connected or more cohesive. Um, so I've got two paragraph uh, structuring techniques. Or, um, and so you can use this as you think about big ideas in your essay, or you can um, you can use this just as you try and make two or three sentences kind of line up together. So uh, first we've got weaving. Um, so we've got two techniques, weaving and aligning. Um, so and this has to do with how we place the content items of our sentences or of our paragraphs. And so. Um, so with weaving, uh, this helps, uh, both of these help the flow, both weaving and aligning help the flow of your writing. Um, flow is a complex word. Um, when we're talking this way, we're talking about kind of sequence structuring um, and logical flow. Um, but both of those, we have to, that word's complicated and I'm not going to deal with it right now. Um, but we'll use it in quotation marks. Um, one way to help your paragraphs flow for your readers is by weaving the content of your sentences together. If you weave your content together, your reader can stay tracking with the logical development of your ideas. And so if you need a formula, imagine that you've got a sequence of sentences, one, two, three, four, um, like this. Um, and I've even got this fun color-coded diagram. But if you've seen the movie Shooter by Mark Wa or starring Mark Wahlberg, the old school one, um, you may be familiar with the following example of weaving. Or if you've just watched Top Shot or some other thing but the it, instead of just saying slows fast which doesn't have a logical progression and feels like it would jump ideas um the uh the character in the movie says slow is steady steady is accurate accurate is fast so slow is fast um and so the uh, th his goal in the movie was to help this um kind of green rookie fbi agent be more capable since he was the only guy he had to help him against all the baddies with all the big guns um and so uh, the idea here with writing is that what, when we weave, we are, it's almost like a, an internal, like a, a writing cross stitch of sorts, where you, um, you take the last thing you said, you swing forward, and then you come back. So whatever the last thing is in one sentence, find a way to make it the first or first thing you say in the next sentence, whether that's the first thing in a transitional phrase or whether it takes on um, the position, grammatical position of subject and it becomes the next thing you talk about. Um, the idea is that you're steadily progressing and making step-by-step -step movement forward. Um, and it, the um, sometimes people consider this or say it feels repetitive. Um, and if you're using a simple structure like this where the same exact word is used it might feel repetitive but the logical flow is still there um, so you kind of have to balance uh, your rhetorical purpose is there um, so if we've got a topic um, we can always use um, remember we can always use, use synonyms I'll look at that again with aligning but um, when we're talking about this and this idea of weaving it really is the role in the first sentence um, this thing that ends the first sentence its role is to um, add detail to what came before. In the next sentence, um, it is meant to bridge a gap to the thing that comes after. And so we want to think about our ideas in this way. And so um, it, there's a this is a really simple example. Um, but, but with this, so this example uses a simple subject verb adjective sentence structure with each of these just to model the principle. But a lot of times when we're dealing with academic topics or more intense topics, we have to we're we're using we're dealing with more complex things. So a writer can use these um, can make these techniques extremely effective using introductory clauses, compound or compound complex sentences instead of just the simple sentence structure. Um, and so we can use those transitional phrases, we can use the um, blending of uh, compound complex sentences and that sort of thing. Um, so keep that in mind, but that's weaving. Um, weaving is going A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E. So we're doing, it's like this, uh, this writerly cross stitch. Um, after that, we have a lining. Um, so this, um, instead of going A to B and then and then building on B to get to C and building on C to get to D, a lining takes your main subject and just makes that the main focus 
um, whatever your topic is, it makes it the center focus of each sentence. And so that mean that usually means it takes on that um, initial like subject grammatical subject of the sentence role. And so if we look at the example here, um, we still have the little color coded formula so you can kind of follow it. Um, so in this case, all the red words are supposed to be the main topic of that paragraph and each sentence is supposed to add just a little bit more. Um, and so we've got cats are cute, not only that, felines are extremely smart, adding to this idea they adapt quite well to any environment. In fact, cats are just awesome swag. Ignore the last part, it was based on a thing with a class I had like in 2013. Um, so it was a fun thing, maybe 2015, now I forget. But, um, but the idea is that even if we're using synonyms here, cats, felines, they, cats, the main subject or topic of those sentences is, is what comes first. And then each sentence adds a little texture, adds a new lens. It, they're cute, they're smart, they're, uh, they adapt, and they're just awesome, right? So each sentence adds a little more texture. Whatever our topic is, that's how aligning works. And so what that does is it allows the, um, so both of these things are really kind of cognitive uptake things through the structure and the grammar. And so um, by placing the, uh, by aligning the main subjects across multiple sentences, um, it allows the, reader's brain to take in that information, process that information because the structure is so smooth um, and, and paralleled, because that parallel structure exists, it, it makes it a lot easier for, for readers to process that information and, um, and build on it you've, by making it clear. And in this example, um, as opposed to the one before, I, I also kind of try and model um, using transitional phrases, even though these aren't like the most amazing transitional phrases. Um, in this case, it's just trying to show that we're building um, and I'm using additive, not con not contrastive transitional phrase uh, phrases there. Um, but they're not embedded all that much and there's not a whole lot of content. It's just to model the structure. Um, so note that the formula for the formula to work, the writer does not have to use the same exact word. Again, we can use synonyms and I would even discourage it, it so you don't have five sentences that end up feeling like a bullet point list. This is a danger with the aligning uh, model is that if you go and you give, if you set up this parallel structure, and you don't use transitional phrases, it can feel like a bullet point list, especially if you're using simple sentences. So keep that in mind as you go to apply this. Um, but uh, instead, by aligning these subjects and using synonyms, the writer can create coherence out of what initially may have felt like random facts. Um, so sometimes your initial rough draft, you've got like four different thoughts in your head and you put it in really fast. Sometimes you can flip a sentence around um, so that the main focus becomes the topic of that paragraph. Um, it, maybe you just had it in passive voice, or maybe um, maybe you were talking talking kind of in a, back, a reversed way um, in comparison to the sentences around it. Um, with structure, it's not changing the content; it's changing the order or organization of the facts. Uh, so uh, again, also note that this technique works more effectively with transitional introductory clauses to help set up relationships among the sentences, so that it doesn't feel like a bullet point. So both of these uh, models are designed to help you sequence a series of sentences or sequence your structure, uh, the structure of paragraphs. You can tie them in with other paragraphing models like pi or axes or pies, since I just like mashing it up, um, or uh, any of those traditional things. Um, it's less about where pies, pi and axes are about kind of the content of each part of the paragraph, this is how we organize that content. So again, there's a reason there are eight aspects of writing. This is a structural um, design technique that helps reinforce your, uh, your analytical logic or your logic of ideas and, and makes it coherent. What those ideas are and how those things, what is less important with these techniques, but you can establish them with a pi or axes model and then organize them or structure them or rearrange words in the sentences or rearrange sentences slightly so that it builds more naturally, that the logic um, naturally meaning that the reader can track with whatever your logic is by that sequence. Um, so keep that in mind. It can also be really uh, effective as kind of a, a check on logic to make sure you're not walking into logical fallacies 
um, slippery slope fallacies, that kind of thing. So um, this is just a simple uh, kind of, it's more of a how-to or a quick tip or a really practical thing. Again, if you're thinking eight aspects of writing model, this would be linked to the structural. There's a hint of the technological since how we are organizing the words is designed to help uptake uh, content, though it, um, whether it counts as a literacy technique or a technological readability technique, I'll let you decide. With that, have a good weekend and enjoy your summer.